my name's Andy. I'm one of the learning team here at Tudor House and Garden. We're living in fairly extraordinary times. And one of the things that I've seen on the news a fair bit is it's like being in a war. That's what's often said. And the last time that life was changed so completely, so utterly, was in the Second World War from 1939 to 1945. So I thought that in this short video, we'd look at one aspect of, of that conflict, that war, and then also to finish, I'll show you an experiment that you can do at home if you'd like to. We're gonna talk about gas masks. At the beginning of the war, every single person was given a gas mask. The, the fear was that bombs containing gas would be dropped on Southampton and other places as well, and it can cause a lot of damage, often to the eyes, and it gets into the, the lungs as well, this type of gas. And so these gas masks were there to, to prevent people getting sick, getting unwell. Uh, this one here is a, a replica, which means it's okay to try them on. If you've got any lying around your homes, in the loft or whatever, don't put them on, because sometimes they contain uh, a material called asbestos, which, which can cause uh, you to get sick. So don't do that, um, put them on. But this one is a, a replica, a copy. Uh, so everybody would get one and uh, they'd have to put their chin in like this. And uh, go on and so forth. And they'd practice. And uh, it's not very comfortable. And I can't see very well. So I'm going to take it off. <laughs> Everyone had to practice all the time. And they were really worried about uh, the sound of the alert that would, would, would signal that there was a gas attack. And, and that was uh, one of these. It's called a gas rattle. And uh, let's have a little listen to it. <laughs> Not a great sound. Uh, these were used after the war as, uh, as football kind of rattles uh, and they were often the ones they had from the Second World War that we used. So the gas rattle goes off, you put your gas mask on, everybody has to carry their gas mask around with them at all times in the event of a, of a gas bomb going off. And there are various different types. So uh, we've got the replica here, uh, that's the one I tried on. Uh, other ones? A little bit larger, and this is quite an interesting one. It's got a little valve there, because uh, as you can imagine, if you're wearing it for a long time, when you're breathing out, it steams up. It's not very nice. Uh, so this little valve, when you breathe out, the little droplets of water can come out of the valve there. And the final one that I'd like to show you is this. Um, and this is what's known as a Mickey Mouse gas mask, and it was specially made for children, a bit, bit smaller, and uh, allegedly looks like the Disney character Mickey Mouse. Uh, between you and me, I think this is the most terrifying of the lot. The good news was that, in actual fact, these gas masks were never needed because not a single gas bomb fell on Britain during the Second World War. Perhaps it was understood by, by the German army that actually we were so well prepared here in Britain that it wasn't worth it and it was worth using different types of bombs instead. So for the next part of the uh, video, I thought we'd look at an experiment that you can try at home, which is to make your very own gas mask filter. For that, we're going to go outside. So if you'd like to come and join me, we'll have a little look together. Welcome outside here at Tudor House. And now we're going to show you how a gas mask worked using an experiment that you can have a go with at home. And we're going to start with our gas mask itself, which is actually a half bottle. 
you can see I've put some masking tape at the end. And uh, handily, uh, there's a hole in the table, so let's pop that in there. That's our gas mask, uh, but that's not going to filter anything at the moment. So we need to find some things that are going to be able to filter out the poisonous gas particles. Um, now, I've got one of these. You might not have one of these at home, but hopefully most of the other things you will have. This is a coffee filter, so I'm going to put that in at the end there. And uh, what shall I get now? Well, I've got some stones, some pebbles, so I'm going to pop those in as well. There we go, they're just from the garden. And some cotton wool. I thought that might be quite good. Now, again, if you don't have these things, don't worry, because you've got lots of other stuff lying around and you can have a little experiment to see what works well and what doesn't. The real gas masks used all sorts of things, silk, charcoal they used, um, amongst other things. So there we are, we've got a gas mask here. Um, and I'm going to pop it on an empty glass, there we are, like so. Now what we're going to use for our poisonous gas is dirty, muddy water. So there it is, that's just got mud in it, you could do all sorts of things. And so we're going to pour this in and we're going to see how effective our filter becomes. So if we pour that in there. Got lots of horrible stuff in there. But then, if you watch, we're getting clean water coming through the filter. And that's the same principle as a gas mask. Now, if you do this experiment at home, do not drink the water, because although it might look nice and clean for us, uh, it could still have lots of bad germs and stuff in, so, uh, so, so don't drink it. But hopefully that's helped you understand how a gas mask in the Second World War worked. Thanks for watching.